Hey everyone, it's Size on here. Today I'm going to do a project walkthrough of one of my upcoming songs called Nexus. I made this song around 2021, near the end of 2021, I think. And it's an ongoing process with like different versions and all of that. And I got a singer on it. I was pitching to labels for a little bit and decided it would be best to self-release this on my own. And it's coming out April 12th. So I wanted to do a preview walkthrough of how I made this song. So to start off, we have this beautiful intro. So I would say that's the main intro melody. And it's this White Knight uh, synth preset. I fed it through a Tor Verb reverb with a lot of reverb, pretty much. At that time, I was using Tor Verb a lot, and that's kind of how I had this signature, spacious reverb sound to all of my melodic synth elements. And it's also being filtered too with a low pass filter. And later on, it goes an octave up higher. It's kind of like very dreamy sounding. And I just have some like corrective EQ on there as well. And then during that part as well, I have this art playing in the background, this pluck. Very spacious as well. Without the reverb. It has a lot of delay, as you can tell. Uh, another preset. And again, that's kind of how I got that signature reverb sound at the time and then goes an octave up pretty much playing the same um melody for the synth arp pluck arpeggiator pluck um like the rhythm of it and this is a whole group of pads um just pretty much pads stacked on top of top of each other um in terms of Samples, you know, they're just it's all filtering up. This is really an art, I would say. This is also playing in the background too. It's sort of a background element, I would say. Then we have this pad in the background sample. And then reverb. And this is also later with another pad too. And then when this part com comes in, this is sort of the pre chorus build up element a part well not element but part of the song That's the build-up part of it. 
this kind of like brassy synth comes in. It's a counter melody. So something that complements the main melody. So that's the main melody, and this just complements it. This is another uh, preset called Atlantis Horns. And some just more EQing. And we also have this faster synth pluck arp happening. And speeds up towards the end. Same melody. Um, same melody as the original background pluck arp that's playing in the background. And for effects during the build up, we have this riser sample here. And all I really did there is keep it the same and just high past it to get rid of their low end. Riser two, so three risers. And playing together. We're introducing the main bass that comes in. In the drop. And pretty much it's just pitch bending upwards, I believe. Yeah, it's pitch bending up about, yeah, an octave, so 12 semitones. And that's like one of the main bases that I use in the main drop chorus, the main part of the song. And then we have this low reese. Really, it's just detuned saw waves um, with a low pass filter right there. And just distortion, flanger phaser just for the effect and some compression. And I distorted a little bit more with RC20 for the low end. And I just EQ so that range is, is only for that range, frequency weight range. I'm using a soft clipper just to tame the level of it, the, the peak level of it, so it's not um, going everywhere in terms of the volume. And this is a layer for it, the Reese bass. Diva. Same sort of process. I'm getting rid of the low end. And I'm also using Soothe 2 to pretty much duck the low end when the Reese happens. So it's getting rid of the low end frequencies when the Reese space happens, when they're both happening at the same time, layered together. That's also another layer two I'm using. Um, pretty much a different type of bass, I think, even though it's the same preset. And what I'm doing there is same process. Um, using C2 to get rid of the low end when both the Reese and the bass line happen. For the drums, during the build up, we have this. It's filtered out, that's the kick, it opens up. So pretty much, I'm using a soft clipper here to tame the volume levels. Um, so they're the same volume, the kick and the snare. And
I'm also compressing the snare when the kick happens, so it ducks the volume of the snare, so they're not the transients of the kicking. The transients of the snare are not conflicting with the kick, um, so it just allows for more breathing room volume-wise when they both happen, so they're not both going overboard with the volume when they both happen. And just EQing the low end of the snare, and I'm also, yeah, I'm frequency shifting the snare too. So it pitches up, you can kind of hear it go higher in pitch. And we'll move to the drop. Drums are the same, pretty much a mid-tempo, typical kick and snare pattern, and that's a cymbal. So yeah, just using open hi hats for that, and then this hi hat loop, like during the part there. Then second half to drop, I'm using that. And I'm also using these orchestral drums. This chair um, loop. And I'm side chaining a bit more so there's a bit more pump. Um, for the kick in the snare and so it doesn't conflict with the kick as well. I'm also getting rid of the low end from the kick in the snare in the trailer drums so that they don't conflict with the kick in the bass, the kick in the snare, not the kick in the bass, it's the kick in the snare. <laughs> and effect wise during the drop we have this. Just like a synth riser. Kind of like that atmospheric percussion kind of sounding stuff. As you can hear. And then for the bass, for the basses during the drop, we have this. This drop went through a lot of different versions. So initially, This is more sustained. Actually, you can play it right here. It was originally this. More sustained, but I decided to get rid of that. And use it more of like a pluck bass. So this is just a bass jam I did. Um, not even a bass jam, but a sound design session. So this is a sound design session I did. That's how I made this bass. So it's a sample, so I can't show how I made it. It's the same bass, just um, placed differently. Well, they're different pitches, so I wanted to tune them differently and all that. We have these filler basses that come in throughout. These are all from the same um, sound design session. These are different samples playing. So it's all from a sound design session. And with it all together, it sounds like this. So there's two different bass lines happening here. We have this icon has tick wave table and the saw wave with a low pass filter and 
so it is sounds like this. Star wave is detuned and it's the alpha is modulating the cutoff the cutoff and some hyper dimension to give it some width and distortion, tube distortion. We have this gain reduction plugin that just makes it feel a lot bigger. Adds more crunch to it, the sound. We also have Disperser. This is some more like click on the transient of it. And mid side OTT to bring it out a little bit more. really brings out the mid frequencies and the high frequencies, so it's a useful tool mid side OTT compression. And we have this bass that's playing. Just like really during certain parts to just give the bass more emphasis. It's a Zebra, U, U, U H E Zebra patch. It then comes in more full force um, during the second part of this drop chorus. that part, I'm using part the Synthly 2, these like brass strings. I'm taking the melody, the main melody and just putting it in there. Super saws, I'm using three different layers here. I'm using a bass saw sustain layer. I'm using Ableton Wavetable. So just saw waves. Um, it's really one saw wave. And with uh, eight unison voices on shimmer mode. And I'm using Vital 2. So just saw waves with the unison and a bit of reverb too. And then I'm also using a lot of, oh, just only a little bit of Tor Verb Reverb actually um, to give it some more space and make the super saw chords unique sounding a little bit of ott compression to bring them out the mid frequencies a little bit more eqing to bounce everything out and soft clipper to bounce out the volume of it for the second drop it's pretty much the same thing but with different bass elements that come in So it's just a different pattern for the bass line. And just more stacked octaves for the bass. Just to give it a different feel. And for these bass fills that come in, 
the last part of this tutorial. Uh, I have some lasers here. Just a saw wave on the sync window mode, 16 voices, and it's I have a fast LFO modulating the course pitch to give it that laser sound. And it really just like it's two notes, um, one octave up from E and an octave lower. And you have this big bass here. Kind of like a dubstep bass, a uh, square womp, I called it. <laughs> and just some FM, really, from oscillator A. And that's like up three octaves. And band reject filter to give it some laser sound. Flange filter to really give it that metallic sound as well. Distortion and the reverb. So that is my tutorial on Nexus, on how I made it on the project walkthrough. I hope you all enjoyed it. I will come out with more videos, um, mix series, ambient mix series, and tutorials and discussions. If you like the content and what I am posting, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot, and I will keep you updated as well. And thank you for watching.